What's going on everyone? So this is the video that I'm excited for. This is going to be the performance test between the Apple Watch Ultra, the Series 8, and the brand new Apple Watch SE second generation. Now even though these Apple Watches are similarly spec'd out, especially when we talk about the specs in just a moment, it still is left unsure if they will actually perform identical. Due to the fact that one, like the Ultra, has a much more larger display, and then Series 8 has more sensors and stuff to also power. Because if we pause and actually take a look at the specs on paper, they're not too far apart. Now yes, the Ultra can only be bought in a large 49mm display. Meanwhile, the Series 8 can only be owned in two size sources to choose from. The larger 45, which is what we have right here, and the smaller 41. The Apple Watch SE 2 can only be purchased in a 44 and a 40mm display size. The Ultra is the only one that's able to actually achieve a 2000 nits of total brightness. Meanwhile, these two are only maxed out at 1000 nits. But internally, all three of these do have the S8 chip found inside all three of them. And they all have the same 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Bluetooth 5.3 is found on all three of them as well. Just with the Ultra, you have the finest material as it does have an arrow gray titanium body. With a sapphire crystal for the display. The Series 8 comes available in both stainless steel and aluminum. This one is the aluminum Midnight. Was a sapphire display and the SE2 can only be purchased in aluminum. Sapphire is found on the back for the heart rate sensor, but the display is made out of nylon compounds. The wire resistant on the Ultra is up to 100 meters, 50 meters for both the Series 8 and the SE2. Cellular is standard for the Ultra, optional for both the Series 8 and the SE2. The Ultra has more speakers, microphone, sensors of power same goes for the series 8 has ecg and the se2 doesn't have that only has a heart rate sensor and internal sensors for collision and fall detection which is also found on these two so here we are with each apple watch so we have the ultra series 8 and the se2 and this is the first time that i'm actually going to just use my backup restore so all these Apple Watches that you see here are restored with the same backup. But the first test I want to go ahead and perform is just go ahead and turn off each Apple Watch. And we're going to go ahead and turn them on at the same time and see which one of these Apple Watches turn on the quickest. So let's wait for it to fully shut off. Take a sip of coffee and all three of them are turned off. So this is going to be kind of challenging at first. It's just to get my fingers in correctly to hit quickly hit the power button on all of them at once. Okay, that was pretty close and synchronized. See which one turns on first. Now even though all three of these are on the S8 chip, I still think the iPhone easily turns on quicker than the Apple Watch. But we have a different animation screen on the Ultra. Could mean it's in first place already. Wow, this is really taking a while. And in first place was surprisingly the SE2. Second place, Series 8. And of course, my theory was correct. A larger display does require more processing power to push those extra pixels. So the Ultra is going to be surprisingly slower, but not by a whole lot, just by a couple of seconds. So that was really interesting. The next step I would like to do is just go on this list of apps that I have on all these app watches. This one's still installing due to the fact I restore it from this Ultra backup. So I'm going to give it a couple times until these third party apps are fully installed. Bear with me, but we're going to go ahead and go down the entire list. But first, let me go ahead and prep this by turning off every single like background app that's open. So instead of individually like fully shutting off apps, I'm just going to go and quickly go into settings, go into general, background app, refresh. Go ahead and do the exact same thing for the series eight. Double check in, turn off, turn off. There we go. And then I'm also going to go ahead and take my paired iPhone. I'm going to go ahead and just disconnect it from Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So all these Apple Watches are disconnected and not paired to the iPhone. So they only use data from my iPhone to load up some third-party apps on the Apple Watch. So it's solely relying on its built-in Wi-Fi. So let me just wait for all these apps to get installed on the Series 8. And we'll begin the uh, app speed test. Alright, so here we are. Each Apple Watch is obviously disconnected from my iPhone. So I was only drawing data through my Apple Watch for some of the accessibilities enabled on this one, which shouldn't really alter anything. I think it's just a previous video of mine. 
So let's go ahead and start off with the first app that's on top of our list. That is ABRP, which is a EV charging app. So just got a finger, put everything next to each other. And three, two, one. I would say that was a draw. Again, this is a realistic test, real world test. So it has my backup on all these three devices. Three, two, one on excessive activities. This holds on a different menu. But again, it was about the same. Alarms in three, two, one. Super close to each other. Amazon Music. Three, two, one. I'm probably going to blur that, but I'll call it a draw. The Apple App Store, this is a more demanding data app. So in three, two, one. Again, I'll give it a draw due to the fact that this one I just had to kick continue because it's the first time activating the App Store. My Weeble accounts, three, two, one. Error. This one just received an error message. It's interesting. But again, they're not too far apart from each other. Three, two, one on the Apple App Store. Ah, missed that up. Let's see if it catches. I'll call it a draw as well. So clearly, the S8 chip found in all three of these Apple Watches are identical when it comes to opening up and multitasking. Audible. Three, two, one. Okay, we're gonna blur that out too. Audiobooks, three, two, one. This one didn't load the image, but it's the correct audiobook. I'm gonna skip that one. They do privacy, of course. Fortunately, I don't have buddy watch on this one though which is interesting i must have accidentally deleted it but we are going to load up calculator so three two one <laughs> i kid you not it's 100 percent identical so clearly there really isn't much in terms of performance loss for the larger screen aside from the boot up speed so cal calendar real quick three two one Unfortunately, I had to draw that one out because it was asking for a location. That's interesting. I don't know what the Capital One card does, so we're going to open that in 3, 2, 1. Interesting. The Series 8 has been following an odd pattern. Alright, a weather app. Let's launch Carrot. 3, 2, 1. I'll call it a draw, honestly. Charge point, another EV charging app. Three, two, one. Accidentally tap this one quick. So I'm not going to personally count that. So realistically, you witness it right there. If you're wondering if there's a performance difference between the SE2 Series 8 and the Ultra, not really, aside from that boot up time. So these are reasons why you may want to consider the SE2 over the Ultra, especially the Series 8, because there's no real performance gain, really. Just with the Ultra, you do hit that long-lasting battery life, because I have gone three days while charging my Ultra, where these two Apple Watches will immediately need to be recharged after the second day. So yeah, there you guys have it. There's no need to make this video longer as the video right there proves it that yes the se the series 8 and the ultra really do perform identical to one another just my theory is why the ultra was last on booting up is just obviously due to the fact that it has more pixels to turn on and such so that probably is the reason why i had a slower boot up time but other than that when it comes to performance it's identical both have literally the same specs in terms of performance so if you're shopping around between the apple watches here's the video proof that yes all of them perform identical aside from that there you guys have it hope you guys got some good informative information out of this video if you did you know what to do greatly appreciate it if you actually leave this video a like 
especially if I help making your Apple Watch shopping experience pleasant. Now, if you'd like to know my feedback and why I choose the Ultra over the other Apple Watches, is due to the fact that it's the only Apple Watch that can easily last longer than two days under a single charge. And from previous test videos I've done in the past, the Ultra is the only one that's actually capable to deliver 18 hours of total display time. If you'd like to watch that test video right there, when we compare every single generation Apple Watch against one another in the ultimate battery life drain test, the video is right over there. So you can literally click on it and watch and see for yourself how much longer the Ultra can last compared to every single generation Apple Watch. Anyways, appreciate every single one of you guys for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.